So in identification of ancient occupation sites, we're looking for lithic scatter or debitage, which is the leftover flakes from the tool manufacturing process. So in this video, we're going to analyze the debitage found at these ancient occupation sites to determine whether or not they're actually product of human manipulation. When analyzing debitage, one must also consider the possibilities of multiple cultures occupied these sites over time, which could result in different manufacturing processes not recognized by North American archaeologists. Today we're interviewing Mike Cook, who's a professional flint napper and also a longtime amateur archaeologist. Okay, my name is Mike Cook. I've been a, a flint napper for about 44 years. It was something that fascinated me as a kid, and I finally had to learn how to do it. I've done a lot of artifact hunting, I've located countless prehistoric sites that I enjoy hunting and then doing analysis on the cultural material that I find. So every opportunity I get, uh, yeah, I love looking at rocks, artifacts, and just doing whatever analysis I can on it. This is interesting here. Uh, this appears to be a kind of a banded slate, which of course was used by prehistoric people for, you know, pecking, grinding into uh, various called ceremonials, uh, bird stones, uh, banner stones and such. It's possible, you know, I'm sure they, they looked for this material, would pick it up when they saw it with a possible intention of creating something out of it. Whenever I find it on a prehistoric site, I definitely look at it very carefully for signs of alteration. Uh, this is, appears to be a piece of glacial chert. Again, this was something that I have occasionally found uh, artifacts made out of glacial material that I'm familiar with in this area. Uh, so I, there's no doubt in my mind that prehistoric people, when they came on, found glacial material, if it was workable, I'm sure they used it. Uh, this is the same thing. This is a, this is a piece of chert. I, can't readily identify the source. Um, it does have an edge here. It's got a little chattering. It's possible that that's use wear. Uh, be hard to conclude that for sure just on that little bit. Uh, this here is also a piece of glacial material, glacial chert. It appears to be fairly high grade. I don't see signs of alteration. However, this again is something that indigenous people, if they found it, they probably would have used it for something simply because in this area, this is southern Michigan, there's not a lot of indigenous materials that were readily available. So it was a, it was a precious commodity. So when they found glacial material, I'm sure if there was any way they could use it, they, they would. This is... Uh, this is a type of chert. Again, that piece, I don't see any obvious human alteration. This is similar. Now, there is a, there is a conchoidal fracture on this face here. Um, it, it's, that could be incidental, uh, another rock hitting it. Uh, now, if there was two, three, or four in series, then... I'd say, yeah, that is definitely a sign of human alteration, but it could well be something. This stuff was found on a prehistoric site that they picked up with the intent of using. Uh, this is also a, a moderate grade of chert. There's what could have been flake removals here. There's not enough to say for sure. Uh, it could be incidental, but that's the problem with some just pieces of material. It's, it's possible that someone did pick it up with the intent of using it or even did use it. Okay, here's another. This is a good grade of chert. There's chattering along this edge. 
it, it suggests, okay, one of two things happened here. Either this piece of chert was tumbled in some fashion, natural or otherwise, uh, that created friction with other rocks and created this chattering on the edge, these little fractures. Or it could have been a simple tool that someone picked up and used it for any number of functions which could create the same chattering. It doesn't appear as though, as though these were planned flake removals. It's more, if, if this is human made, it would be simply incidental to the use of it, creating those little micro fractures. Uh, so that's a possibility. These are both um, chert. Again, I would, the shape, the size of it suggests glacial. Uh, it, it's, it's quite common to find in the, in the glacial till. This is another piece, fairly good grade chert. There's not enough characteristics in it to say its source. And again, probably nothing here that would suggest it was used. Uh, there is some chattering here. It's possible that it, something like this could have been used as a scraping tool for a shaft, but it's it always comes down to having enough where you can say statistically it's not at all likely that would happen naturally. Uh, that's always the rub um, is doing that analysis. Now this here I would say highly likely this is a piece of debitage. High grade of material. There are what appear to be Flake removals here, conchoidal fractures. This could be natural. I think it's more likely that this has been worked, that it is a piece of prehistoric debitage. Conchoidal fracture is simply, it's the property that flint, chert, agate, obsidian, glass, it's, it's a, it has to do with fracture mechanics. When it's struck, by another hard material, it creates a fracture. It's called a Hertzian cone. Uh, the energy radiates in about a oh, 100 degree cone. It's basic fracture mechanics where you can predict the angle of a fracture in this type of material. When I see these little fractures, there's little energy ripples that run through the material. Uh, it's just it's just generally referred to as conchoidal fracture and that's what happens when this material gets struck by either another harder material or in some cases a softer material. The, the tensile strength of this material is very limited so when there's enough tension energy put on it where it creates tension it fractures in a very predictable way. Uh, and the predictability has some to do with quality of the material. Uh, this is also a, a chert. It reminds me of some material that comes from Monroe County, Michigan, that was used, exploited by uh, Aboriginal peoples. It's possible that it could have come from there, but there's other similar materials that occur in different places. It's got one conchoidal fracture right here, which I would say is probably incidental in terms of uh, it was probably banged by another rock. This is a uh, nice piece of chert that, again, it's got some chattering on this edge, which could be human use. It could be incidental, but if this was found on a prehistoric site, I would say this would have been used for something. Sometimes they'd pick this material up and they'd cash it, they'd save it because it was a precious commodity. It was, it was literally a form of currency throughout prehistory. So the, this piece, if I was a prehistoric flint napper and I found this, even if it was glacial, 
I'd say, oh yeah, I'm taking that back to camp. I'm going to use that for something. These, okay, this is a, appears to be a form of quartz or quartzite that was used by prehistoric people. It has very rudimentary uh, conchoidal fracture abilities. It was, in other words, it was a really tough, nasty material to work, but they did use it uh, for lack of better material. In throughout most of Michigan, I, I found many quartzite artifacts and collections, and that's what that is. Uh, here again, this this is nice quality glacial chert. Something the glacier picked up uh, up in Canada, probably, and when they receded, they left a lot of it. Uh, same thing, we got some chattering on this edge. Could it have been used by a prehistoric individual? Yeah. And again, if it was picked up, if it was found by a prehistoric individual, something like this would not have been just discarded. It would have been, even if it was not used, they would have kept it uh, because it was, uh, well, it was a precious commodity. Now these last two pieces here, uh, I would say Pretty certain uh, these were found on a, on a site. Uh, these look like small pieces of fire cracked rock, which is very common on prehistoric sites. It's usually an igneous material like granite, something similar, and they would simply line their fire pits with rock because if you've ever done any camping in cold weather, you know that that rock will hold heat for a very long time. So if you're camping, and even if the fire goes out, uh, and you're near that fire pit, the ground around it, those rocks hold the heat, will, will emanate out and you'll benefit from it. Plus, uh, the, the, the live embers and stuff would have stayed alive longer, so that uh, you could have dug down in there and picked up a, a hot ember and restarted your fire rather than going through the fire drill uh, work, which can be a lot of work. So that that's what just my experience tells me. Um, I wish it could be more conclusive, but a lot of times, you know, you pick stuff up and it's like, boy, yeah, it could be, but uh, without something really definite where you can say, oh yeah, this is not uh, coincidental. Um, you have to kind of assume that, okay, it's probably natural. But again, this stuff here, if you picked it up on a prehistoric site, uh, there's a fair chance that it, it could have just been there, deposited by a glacier, or it could have been something there that they, they found. It's like, okay, yeah, they, they kept it with the intent of using it. Just like on many prehistoric sites, you find Fair-sized pieces of debitage, which never would have been discarded in an area like this where it was so hard to come by. And sometimes you'll find a fair amount of it in one small locale that strongly suggests that it was cached for later use. If it's got clear signs of work, uh, obviously it's some sort of debitage or uh, just a flake tool, which were used a lot, just a simple flake. Well, this is just a flake I knocked off a piece I was working on. It's a piece of Texas flint. Well, uh, it's razor sharp all the way around. That is a very functional uh, utility tool. You can use it for any number of purposes, and I have. Um, I mean, I've completely field dressed and skinned a deer with a flake like this. So there's no doubt that just a simple piece of debitage was a, was a very useful and functional tool for prehistoric people. Uh, and they would, unless they were in a very material rich area, it wouldn't have been discarded. Back then it was more than a piece of stone. It was a, it was a commodity that was very, very useful and at times very, very precious.